My name is Pastor Alex Williams, and you know that this is Watch God Work Monday. Now I ain't come by myself, and I got I, 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 I,
Welcome to the Historical Institutional International Ministries. Watch God work. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All God's people, God bless you and welcome, welcome, welcome to IIM Church Online. It is so good to be here to fellowship with you again today. How y'all feeling? I hope everybody is having an amazing morning so far. Listen, uh, we are so glad to be alive and we're just here to rejoice. I hope y'all ready for service. Y'all ready for service? I know I am. Well, listen, here's the thing. I want you to do this. If you have not done so already, I want you to share, share, share right now. Right, right now, God has been sending a word, a powerful word for his people, and you don't want to keep it all to yourself. So share it with a family member, share it with a friend. On every social media page you have, go share this service right now. Find a way to tag it. Do whatever you got to do. But let somebody know that the word of the Lord is going forth at IIM Church Online. All right? We want you to continue also to comment uh, throughout this service, like and comment. Uh, we want to engage with you. Y'all know how this goes. We've been in this for a minute. And so we want to continue to connect with one another. So go ahead and share, like and comment all throughout the service, all throughout the week. Is that all right? I just have a few announcements for everybody. Listen, we are excited here at IIM because we are celebrating pastoral anniversary next month, February the 7th. It is our pastor's second anniversary, and we are so grateful. Oh, my God. We're so grateful for what the Lord has done and for who God has sent us. Pastor Alex is an amazing pastor and he's been doing an awesome job and we are ready to celebrate and we want you to meet us right here at 10 a.m. on February the 7th. We're gonna have a guest preacher with us, um, Damon Mack, and we love him here at and We cannot wait. Um, we're gonna celebrate in a mighty way and we have some guest artists coming. So we're excited, I can't wait, and I hope that you all are here with us. You gonna come here? You gonna be here? 10 a.m. All right. All right. And then um, coming up this week, we want you to stay connected with us. Uh, so Wednesday night, if you can, we want you to come on our Zoom uh, for prayer and Bible empowerment. Uh, first, we want you to connect with us at 6 a.m. So if you know anyone from IIM, please uh, reach out and see what our uh, Zoom information is. I'm sure it'll be on uh, either a flyer or you'll see it on the pages. OK, go to our pages and you can check us out um, and find out when we're having prayer. 6 a.m. on Wednesday mornings, and then we want you to be with us Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. as we go into the Word of God and study His Word. Um, if you are a woman, if you're a man, if you are a young uh, person, if you're a child, we have something here at IIM for you. So we have the gym women who meet every other Tuesday. We have the core uh, youth and young adult ministry that meet on Mondays at 8 p.m. And then uh, we have the Watchmen's group that meet on Thursdays days. Um, and then we want you to just stay connected. Okay. So you can go to our social media pages. You can go to IIMchurch.com. You can go to uh, Facebook um, or Instagram and follow us so you can know what we're doing throughout the week. Okay. All right. Now that the announcements are out of the way, we're going to go right into the sanctuary. Y'all ready for worship? Let's go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. They already welcomed you to IIM Church. They already told you to like, comment, share. If you've already done that, the only thing left to do is to lift your hands and open up your mouth and give God praise. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. We welcome you to the church. Now, I need you to do me a favor and welcome God in, in the midst of where you are right now. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So that means that when you praise him, God begins to show up. Yes, Lord, this is not a production. Yes, Lord, this is not a special event, but this is our opportunity to glorify the Lord. Do me a favor, no matter where you are. Matter of fact, stand up out of your feet. Come on, get out of your bed, get out of your couch, because I don't praise God laying down. But if the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if God has given you breath in your body, I need you to do me a favor. If you got the activities of your limbs, if COVID-19 did not hit your body and you were on a ventilator, 
have breath in your body and that means you have a reason that means that you have a right that means that it's your obligation to open up your mouth and give God praise from the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same God's name is to be praised so do me a favor no matter where you are no matter what state you find yourself in lift up your hands open up your mouth come on and I dare you to begin to speak well of him come on promise you God wants to show up in your midst yes Lord but it's according to your faith come on you are the great I am you are the great I am for there is none like you for angels bow before you heaven and earth adore you you are a mighty God for we decree and declare this morning that the earth is the Lord's yeah Yabasa. I feel your presence for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein you are the God Jehovah you are the God who reigns you you are El Shaddai, you are Elohim, you are El Elyon, you're the guy who never fails, you're our provider, you're Jehovah Nisi our banner, you're Jehovah Sikhanu our righteousness, you're Jehovah you're Jehovah Shammah you're our provider you're the one who heals our body you're the one who makes ways you're the God who delivers you're the God who sets free you're the God who saves you're the God who heals you're our mind regulator you're our heart fixer you're the one who brings us from depression you're the one who calms our fears you're the one who tells anxiety yeah, to behave so this morning we lift our hands this morning we open up our mouth this morning we cry out a praise to you for you're amazing Come on, don't let me tell you what to say to God but I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to open up your mouth and Shabbat your God come on Shabbat come on lift up your voice come on not the voice of defeat but the voice of triumph lift up your voice not the voice of the defeated not the, the voice of the depressed but let the redeemed the Lord say so if he has delivered you, yeah, not my soul. If he has delivered you, if he's had brought you out out of the hands of the enemy, you owe God a praise. Come on, take a moment, take a second, take an opportunity, and glorify your God. Come on, yeah, that somebody decree and declare, God, you're amazing. Come on, let me see you type it on your screen, God, you're amazing. In 2020, you've been amazing. In 2019, you've been amazing. If in 2017, you've been amazing. And I decree, declare that in 2021, you're going to be amazing. Yes, Lord, come on, prophesy to your year. This year. Come on, this year. This year. This year. We said it last week. This year. 2021. Yes, Lord. God's still going to be amazing. Yes, Lord, we praise God and we glorify him. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you did not like, comment, and share yet, hit that share button. Get up out of your feet, out of your chair, out of your bed, out of your couch. And somebody declare on the screen, God, you're amazing. God, you're amazing. Hallelujah. Come on, lift it up, lift it up. Hallelujah. We serve an amazing God. Hallelujah. We want to lift this up to you, Jesus. No one compares to you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, lift up your voices and magnify the King of Kings. Magnify the Lord of Lords. Yeah. Say you're amazing. You're you're mine. No, I'm glad to say you're mine. Come on, lift it up. Say you're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're so Lord of all, the 
to be a way maker. I know him to be a deliverer. When I almost lost my mind, when anxiety tried to creep up and take over me, the God that I serve didn't allow it to overtake me. So I say you're amazing, my God. I say you're amazing, my God. There's nothing that you can't do. There's no problem that you can't solve. Come on, everybody in the building, if you know that he is amazing today, just lift your hands and say, God is amazing. Come on, say, God is amazing. Hallelujah. I love the way that the Lord just brings, just brings us joy and brings us peace. When we're feeling down, he is amazing. He knows how to lift us. Hallelujah. We glorify him on this morning. 
How majestic is the name of the Lord? Yes, God. That's why I praise you, because you're amazing. That's why I glorify you, because your name is amazing. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, one more time, just type on your screen that he is an amazing God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just when I think about who God is, for real, for real, and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Come on, somebody just say hallelujah. Even those that are in the room today, just say hallelujah. I thank him, I thank him, I thank him. I thank him for his amazing power. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, Evangelist Whitney, but God is so amazing to me. Hallelujah. And I praise him. That's why I serve him. Amen. Because he's God and beside him, there is none other. Amen. Listen, I'm so happy and I got to move on this morning. Amen. Because when I just think about who God is, amen, he's everything. Somebody just look at somebody and say, he's everything. Come on, say he's everything. He's everything. He's everything. Amen. He is everything to us. Amen. And that's why we glorify the name of the Lord. Amen. I praise him today and I glorify him. Listen, I want everybody. Because when I keep talking about the Lord, we're not going to move on and I'm not going to receive this offering. But I need to receive everybody's gifts on today. Hallelujah. We have been in challenging times. But if you know that God is an amazing God. I want you to think about what you need from him. Think about what you have on your prayer request. And I want everybody to get their seed out and get your tithe out. Amen. Just because of the pandemic, we don't stop giving our tithes to the Lord. You know why? Because he's yet providing for us. Amen. Some of you are sitting, you yet have a job. Aren't you grateful for a job? Amen. Aren't you grateful for some type of income? Amen. When there's so many other people that don't have. But I want you to get your 10% out. Amen. Of what the Lord have given to you. But I want you to sow. Amen. I want you to sow a seed of faith. What did I say? A seed of faith. Amen. Faith is seeing it before you see it. Or else you will never see it. That's what faith is. The substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things that we just cannot see. But I want you to grab hold of faith. And I want you to get your offering out. Amen. I'm starting with $100 as I do each week. And it's not because I have a whole lot of money. It's because I'm obedient to the word of the Lord. We talk about divine provision. Well, one of the principles of divine provision is obedience. So I want you to get your offering out today. If you can follow me. Amen. God, I'm sowing this seed of $100 because of, and you know what you need from God. God, I need increase in my home. I need my children saved, my husband saved, my wife saved. God, I need healing in my body. God, I need, I need, I need. And you know what he said? He said, whatever we ask in his name, believing. I love the word. He said, whatsoever we ask, believing. He said, I will do. So I want you to sow today. If you don't have that hundred, don't feel bad. Give what you can give. God, here's the 50, and I sow it unto you because you cannot beat God's giving, no matter how you try. It used to be an old song back in the day. We used to sing it. You can't beat God's giving. Amen. Because the more you give, the more he will give it back to you. And I encourage you, just keep on giving. Amen. Listen, I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for who you are. You are an amazing God. Oh, God, we thank you because today we find you to be our keeper, our savior, our healer. Hallelujah. We find you to be everything that we need. If we have tried everything and everything has failed, I encourage you to try Jesus. And God, we thank you because you are our provider. And we know when we give our gifts today, as you have promised in your word, that if we give, you'll give it back to us. Press down shaken together and you will run it over and God we give you glory on today and we thank you in advance come on everybody let's just glorify the name of the Lord amen because I don't know about you but I believe God 
Come on, just touch somebody in your house and, and somebody in the building, just look at somebody and say, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. There are three methods of giving. You can go to Givelify. You can go to PayPal. And you can go to Cash App. Amen. Give. Don't procrastinate. But give. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Amen. God bless you because I believe God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody, for God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Come on, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Come on, I know that we've been just saying praise the Lord, everybody, that we use it as a colloquialism, but that's actually a commandment. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, Lord, if you have the activities of your limbs and if you have breath in your body, I dare you to open up your mouth. Yes, Lord, and give God praise because the Bible says let everything that hath breath Come on, praise the Lord. So come on, come on, let's worship him together. Come on, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He's King of Kings and he's Lord of Lords. He's our great ruler. He's our great King. He is our great Savior and we honor you, Jesus. Come on, I dare you, yes Lord, to get up out of your bed, get up out of your couch and come on, just lift up your hands and honor him. God is the one who kept you. And because of his God, because of his mercy, because of his grace and kindness, we honor him. Yes, Lord, we honor him. Come on, we honor you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord, come on. Give him the fruit of your lips. Yes, Lord. Come on, we're going to lift this up to God. Come on, come on, lift up your hands. We praise thee, oh God. Oh, we lift up our hands. Oh, God. Yes, Lord, come on, honor him. We praise thee, oh God. Come on, honor him, honor him. We praise thee, oh God. Come on, lift up your hands and tell them. For your name is hallowed in this place. Come on, tell them. We praise thee, oh God. Come on, nobody got to force us to praise them, but we do it willingly. We praise thee, oh God. Yes, Lord, take me shot about the We praise thee, oh, 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 oh God. Yes, Lord, for your name is in and about hallowed in this place. For we give you all in about the Our Lord, yes, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Come on, from your heart, from your spirit, come on, pour it out to God. For we give you all the glory. And about so that about say, we worship you. to be praised come on one more time come on let it flow from your belly come on let it flow from your lips for we give you yet oh, about set that about the glory we worship you come on how Lord you are worthy come on now lift up your hands to god come on open up your mouth come on tell him that he's great my praise belongs to you my praise only belongs to you yeah 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 say oh yes 
Lord, for making ways, for keeping my mind, for keeping my body, for being my helper, for being my king, for being my redeemer. We worship you. We're entering the end of our fast and so lift your hands just like this God we receive come on somebody declare it at home God I receive I receive change I receive transformation I receive repositioning God we are the potter and you are the clay mold us and make us yes Lord yes Lord nothing else matters but you and your will and your purpose prevailing. Yes, Lord. Get the glory out of our lives. Come on, get the glory. Touch yourself, touch yourself and say, God, get the glory out of my life. Everything I do, everything I say, every relationship, every business transaction, every job I take, God, you get the glory. We thank you, God, for this word. We thank you, God, for your spirit. We thank you, God, that you will get the glory. We thank you, God, that you are perfect in all of your ways. Your word is a lamp into our feet, a light into our pathway. And we thank you, God, for the anointing being with us today. In Jesus' name. Now, come on, give God praise right where you are. Come on, give God praise. Yes, Lord, we're going to the book of Genesis, chapter 45. We are on part five. We are ending our series entitled somebody type on your screen and say it in the house divine provision divine provision this is our sermon series for the month but this is what we're standing on for the year of 2021 and how many people believe that you're walking in divine come on provision yes lord and we're not forsaking our, our text our text is coming from genesis chapter 45 verses 3 through 8 They'll put, it up, well, they'll put it up on the screen, but we're going to be reading from the NIV, New International Version. And we've been studying this text all month. Evangelist Whitney's been doing it during Bible study. We've been preaching it on Sunday. And the word of the Lord reads, verse 3 says, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. He says this to his brothers. He says, is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Verse 4 says, then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. And when they had done so, he said, I am, yes, it's me. I am your brother Joseph, the one that you sold into slavery, the one that you, come on, betrayed, the one that you put your knife in my back. I'm the one that you sold into slavery. Verse 5 says, and now do not be distressed, do not be angry with yourself for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Somebody say, God did it. God did it. Come on, God did it. Uh, verse 6 says, for the next two years, there had been a famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing, nor will there be reaping. But God sent me ahead of you, yes, Lord, to preserve. Somebody say, God did it. Uh, for a remnant on earth to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me, but God. Somebody one more time say, God did it. He made me the father to Pharaoh, Lord of his uh, entire household and ruler all over Egypt. We thank God for the reading of the word. We are concluding our series. Somebody say it one more time. Divine provision. Say it. Come on, type it. Divine provision. And all month long, we have been studying and talking about how Joseph, uh, when his brothers came back to him, there was a famine in the land. And, uh, and we've been teaching that, that not only was there a famine in the land, that the only place to find refuge was Egypt. The text begins to tell us that for seven years, there would be a harvest, uh, Joseph have dreamed that dream and then he said for seven years there's going to be a great famine so Egypt uh, was able to store up resources for seven years and for those of you who are listening to me right now this is not a money matters course but I got to tell somebody stop spending everything you got sometimes you got to save and be prepared for when there is lack in the land somebody say amen 
Come on, this is wisdom. Uh, but the Bible begins, come on, the Bible begins to tell us that there was a famine in the land, but they stored up for seven years. They saved, come on, they were responsible, they were disciplined, and the people of Egypt saved up so that when the seven years of famine came, that they would still have plenty. Somebody say amen. And so our text tells us that as Joseph's brothers came from Israel and they came from the land that was lacking and they came from Canaan and they came into Egypt, the Bible begins to teach us that Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. Yes, those same brothers. Yes, those snaggertooth brothers. Yes, those trifling brothers. Yes, those brothers who were two-faced. Yeah, those brothers that were haters. Those brothers that sold Joseph into slavery. And the Bible begins to tell us that, 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 that he says, to his brothers that I'm going to provide for you. I, uh, even though you've done me wrong, I'm still going to make sure you're taken care of. I'm going to send you to a land called Goshen. Y'all remember that word? Somebody say Goshen. That that word, uh, that, that, that land was a land of plenty. It was a land where farmers had enough. It was a land that was plenteous. It was a land that had much water that flew through it. Uh, but what, 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 when we, uh, over this past month, we begin to understand the deeper meaning of that word Goshen. And, and we understood that the word Goshen means to draw close or to draw nigh to God. Baby, I don't know who I'm talking to, sir. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I came to tell somebody that in this season, it is not time to play with God. Come on. In this season, it is not time to do religion. In this season, it is not good enough just to watch service once an hour, once a week. But it is time. It is the season to draw nigh to God because what is about to hit this land you're gonna need to be close to God to make it yeah 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 masa Somebody said, I need to dwell in Goshen. I need to dwell in Goshen. And so our text, uh, we've been studying over these last five weeks about God's provision. First week, I taught a message entitled that your provision is a noun. Yes, your provision could be a person. Y'all remember elementary school. A place or what? Somebody tell me, a thing. Yes, uh, uh, the second week, Cole Pastor gave us the seven keys to experiencing God's provision. And I love Cole Pastor because she came to preach preached that thing and proclaimed that thing to us and gave us the tools. In week three, we taught a message that was entitled Restore and Pour, where we came from the book of Joel. Come on. And then we, 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 we last week... The Lord gave us a text entitled, Faith Cures a Famine. We weren't talking about Joseph, but we were talking about his granddaddy, Isaac. Come on. That sowed a seed into a land of famine. But the Bible says that in the same year, he reaped 100 fold. And I know that some of you may have been with us last week and some of you have not. But for those of you who were not here last week, I ought to tell you and prophesy the same thing that God gave me last week. And I prophesy to everybody that God, you so about as you sow your seed come on as you are about plant what God has told you to do you're not going to reap next year but somebody open up your mouth and say this year this year come on type on your screen this year in 2021 but 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 the Lord gave me another word for today and it's very short it's very clear and and, and the Lord gave me this word today and and if y'all hear me today the word today somebody proclaim it was necessary Come on, it was necessary. So, so we're talking about divine provision. We are now in the place in chapter 45 where Joseph is now the Lord of Egypt. Can I break down this text? Uh, we're in a place where we see that he has dominance. We're in a place where it sounds great because he's able to control uh, the, the, the resources. He's able to control everything that goes on around him. But what's imperative about this text is that as, uh, it's, it's, it's important not just to see Joseph as a ruler. It's not just important to see the people having property and having resources. But it's important to study the man named Joseph because in this story, come on we begin to understand the humanity of Joseph in many of our stories in the Bible we only get part of his life but but I, what I love about the story of Joseph the reason why it's one of my favorites is because we follow him from being a baby come on we follow him from when he was young and now he was old and what I love about Joseph is that we were able to understand the humanity come on of Joseph we were able 
to understand that he was uh, his father Jacob's favorite son and that the brothers were jealous so they beat him up come on and they threw him into slavery and the Bible can I tell the story the Bible tells us that he goes into slavery and his brothers go tell his father oh an animal killed him your son is no longer alive and Joseph meanwhile is in slavery's camp and the Bible tells us that he gets into the house of Potter for his ruler can I give y'all some Bible the Bible tells us that he goes into Potiphar's house and he becomes a slave but what I love about God is that no matter where you are God will always cause you to be the head and not the tail Come on, he'll always cause you to be above and not beneath. How many people already know that you are the lender, come on, and not the borrower? Come on, I may be on welfare right now. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. I may be living in the projects right now. Come on, I may be working this nine to five right now. I be may, may be making minimum wage right now, but just give me some time. Come on, just give me another season. God's about to take me exactly where I need to be. So the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, that's the old folks used to say that. The Bible tells us that Joseph is, is now a slave, but if I had to, I don't have much time to tell the story, but he eventually gets accused, falsely accused of something, of sleeping with Potiphar's wife. He is now thrown into slavery. He's now thrown into jail. He is now a prisoner. He trades in his slavery, his royalty for, 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 for jail clothes. And the Bible tells us that he's in jail he meets the baker and he meets the butler of Pharaoh they learn of his gift eventually they say when we get out of here we're going to tell Pharaoh that we met a man that can work that can that can, that can that can do wonders but the Bible tells us that in this place they forget about him they forget about his name until the day comes where Pharaoh has a dream come on I'm catching y'all up to the story where Pharaoh has a dream that no man can understand but the the, the butler says I do remember a man that I met in jail with this amazing gift and Pharaoh says take that man out of where he is and bring them to me what I love about God is that he'll put gifts in you yes Lord that will set you up in the future come on to walk out your purpose somebody just say my gift is making room for me that the gift that God has given you is not just good to impress people but the gift that God has given you is about to reposition you Yes, Lord. So the Bible tells us, so we hear this story. He now becomes an oracle of Pharaoh. But now, and then when he tells him the dream, when he tells him about the famine, and he tells him about the surplus, uh, 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 Pharaoh does the wisest thing and puts uh, Joseph as the Lord of Egypt. And so we hear this entire story, and it sounds great. It has a great twist. It has a great story. But what about the man named Joseph? Because in the, in the midst of a story, there is still a person. In the, in the midst of, of, this, of this great tale, there's still someone who has feelings. There's still someone who has emotions. And that's why you can't be jealous. Come on. And you can't envy what somebody else has. You can't uh, be envious of the anointing on somebody else's life because you don't know what they had to get through. Come on. To get to that place. You don't know the hell that they had to deal with and the pain that they had to endure. You don't know. Yes, or the betrayal that they had to face. So Somebody open up your mouth and say that this anointing costs something. This, this anointing costs something. You may see people preach. You may see people play. You may see people uh, save and lay hands. But this glory of God that's on my life. Come on. I had to cry some tears. I had to go through some pain. I had to face some things that I never wanted to face. Why? Because the anointing and the glory of God costs. So in the midst of the story, there's a man. In the midst of your story, people are looking at you from the outside, but you still got to deal with it internally. Think about the trauma of being betrayed by your brothers. Think about the trauma of being thrown in uh, slavery. Think about the trauma of being falsely accused of rape. Think about the trauma of being in jail. Can I tell the story? Think about the trauma of your life going from this place to that place, from that place to this place. There's a man in the midst of the story. But what I love about Joseph is that his feelings, and I need y'all to hear me, Joseph always keeps his feelings intact. 
I said Joseph always keeps his feelings intact. And there's three things that we can learn from Joseph. Number one, Joseph teaches us, this is my number one point, that Joseph teaches us that he was not a victim, but he was chosen. Come on, I, I need you to just to touch yourself and say, I am not a victim. Come on, come on, I am not a victim, but I am chosen. M many people hear the story of Joseph and we start to feel bad for him. Everybody feels bad for Joseph except Joseph. Because, and, and if we had to be honest, if some of us were in his shoes, we would feel bad for ourselves. We would call ourselves victims. Some of us looked at 2020 and just said, I just can't do nothing because 2020 hit. Come on. Some of us have just said, when 2020 hit, I can't move the way I want to move because of 2020. We, are, we have taken over the victim mentality. But, but can I shift somebody's perspective today? Can I, can I shift somebody's perspective this morning? Because I, I, and you, the reason why I need to challenge your perspective is because the way that you experience life is through the lens of your perspective. I, I, I'm going to say that again for somebody that didn't catch it. I said the way that you experience life, the way that you, that you, that you walk through life is through the lens of your perspective. And in life, you can either accept, come on, the identity of a victim or you can believe what God says about you and you can just touch yourself and say, I'm chosen. Now, it's funny because you would think that Joseph may have been a victim, and he was chosen. And so the Lord gave me this. I have to define. There is a difference between being a victim and being chosen. The, the definition of victim is a person harmed, injured, or even killed as a result of an accident, a crime, or harmful events or actions. That's the definition of a victim. Something happening to you tragically that's accidental. But listen, the definition of chosen is having been selected. Come on, that's what I love. Chosen is having been selected as the best or as the most appropriate. How many chosen people do we have in there? Come on. How many chosen people do we have listening? Come on. Somebody say that this is no accident. That this is no mistake. But God hand selected me because I was the best man for the job. Come on. I said you were the best woman for the job. And in our text, Joseph doesn't accept that he's a victim, but he knows that he's chosen. The text says in verse 8, if you want to study the Bible, the Bible tells us that Joseph says that, brothers, I know that you're scared of me. I know that you feel guilty, but let me put you on notice on something today, that it is not you who has placed me here. Come on. But it was God. It was God that has chosen me to be here. And instead of Joseph identifying himself as a victim, he identified as one who was chosen. I need somebody. I'm speaking to somebody today who has excuses for everything. I'm speaking to somebody who's allowed situations, trials, and tribulations to make them feel like they can't move forward. Some people who are watching me today are mad at God. Come on. Some people are mad at God because they uh, God has allowed certain things to happen. But what I came to prophesy and what I came to tell somebody today that it was no mistake. It was no accident. But God hand selected you. Come on. God knew that you were big enough to deal with it. God knew that you were strong enough to endure it. God knew. God knew. God knew that where that just like Job, he says, have you considered my servant? Sometimes we have to realize that God chose you to use you for a greater purpose. He put you in that situation yeah, for a greater purpose. He put you in that place for a greater purpose. But I need you to shift your perspective. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. I'm not defeated. Come on. I'm not by myself. Uh, God hasn't left me alone. God has not forgotten my name. I am not underneath. But God has chosen me for this. So, the, so, so not only has God chosen me for this, but I have to tell you that Joseph understood that even though God is repositioning me, that it does not come without pain. Number two, there is pain to repositioning. 
I said there is pain to repositioning. I got to say this, in church all the time we say things like, God reposition me. Realign me, God. That sound good. We say, God do this and God do that. But, but I came to say that repositioning doesn't always feel good. And our text shows us that Joseph was repositioned several times. Uh, for, for, for he was his father's favorite to being a slave. He, he went from being a slave to being a prisoner. He went from being a prisoner to being a, a prophet of Pharaoh. He went from being a prophet of Pharaoh to the Lord of Egypt. Somebody say, it was necessary. Come on, it was necessary. And what I love about Yeramasat, the repositioning, is that Joseph did not make the choice on his own to be repositioned, but God had to do it. God had to allow it. Somebody say, it was necessary. Come on. It was necessary that his brothers despised him. It was necessary that his brothers portrayed him. It was necessary that they they sold him into slavery. Uh, it, it was necessary so that he could be repositioned where God, come on, Tebeshua, wanted him to be. I came to say that if they did not harm him, and if they did not injure him, and if they did not offend him, he wouldn't have been elevated. And I got to tell somebody today, if they, for somebody who's watching me today, you are overwhelmed by the spirit of offense. But I need you to break that offense because God came to tell somebody that if it didn't offend you, then you wouldn't have moved. You th I said that job wasn't fruitful, yeah, and you still would have been there if they didn't let you go. Come on. If they didn't offend you, you still would have been there. That relationship had no fruit, yeah, by side. And if they didn't offend you, you'd still be in it. Come on. That position, that place that you were in, yes, so you would have got too comfortable. Sometimes God, yeah, yeah, has to allow offense to make us yeah, uncomfortable in a place that we shouldn't feel comfortable in. And God has to move us, and God has to shake us. And the, the the offense is just a clear sign that it's time to move. Somebody say, it's time to move. It's time to move. Come on. Uh, uh, think about it. And what I love about this, if you think about it, 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 it had to happen. Joseph's brothers always despised him. But he wouldn't have moved if they did not. Come on, if they didn't do it, if they didn't push him into it, if they didn't offend him. I need some mature believers to thank God, not for the money, come on, not for the houses, but for the offense. Come on, I need some mature saints to open your mouth and praise God for the offense. What are you saying, pastor? Thank God for the offense. Yes, thank God for the lies. Come on, thank God for the offense. Thank God you know, for the abuse. Thank God for the attack. Thank God for the gossip. Thank God for being fired from that job. Come on, thank God that they left. Let me go. Come on. Thank God that they walked out of my life. Thank God that, it, that they left me alone or they, they separated from me. What I love about this God that we serve is that it did not kill me. Come on. But it only repositioned me. Come on. It hurt my feelings. But that's okay. It just repositioned me. I know it hurts your heart. But that's okay. It just repositioned you. I know for some of you, it killed your ego. It killed your feelings. It hurt your little heart. And I, I care about your little heart, but I came to say that though it hurt you, it repositioned you. Some relationships, not about so it hurt, but it's okay because I'd rather be in the place where God called me to be rather than be out of alignment. I need somebody to open up your mouth and praise God for the realignment. Come on, praise Him for the repositioning. Come on, open your mouth, take 10 seconds and worship God right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, these are only for the mature believers. These are for only the mature saints. This is for only the mature that understands that what I'm experiencing now is only setting me up for better. So Joseph understood that he needed to be offended to be repositioned. The last thing, and I said this about Joseph, here's the story, here's the man in the middle of the story. His feelings, we have to consider them, but what I love about Joseph is that through every season of his life, his character aligned with his position. That's number three. Somebody say character. His character 
aligned with his position. No matter how many times Joseph repositioned or was repositioned, the one thing that never shifted was his character. Oh, my God. Too many times we separate our position from our character. Oh, Basha. Pastors, you can preach. You got the title, the robe, and the mantle, but you don't have the character. Come on, I'm talking. Somebody, I'm talking better than y'all talking. Come on. I, I said pa- some leaders that we serve, come on, got the title and the acclaim and have the anointing but don't have the character. Don't you know you can be anointed and still be a mess? Come on. Don't you know that you can, have, you can prophesy and still be a mess? Don't you know that you can lay hands on people and still be a mess? The problem with the church is that we've glorified the position and, and, and demoted the character. But somebody say that character aligns with the position. We even saw our president had the title, but not the character. Come on. Too many people got titles and and elevation, but don't have character. But I came to tell you, you can't separate the two. I came to tell you, you can't separate character. Come on. uh, From your position, the higher the calling, the higher the character. Uh, uh, Y'all didn't hear me. I said the higher the calling, the higher the character. The higher the position, the higher the integrity got to be. I I said the higher the elevation, the more discipline that you have to have. Some of you are wondering why God is elevating her and not me. Oh, come on. Y'all don't like me today. I I said, some of you trying to figure out, why did God lift that person up more than me? I got more money than them. Come on. I have more talent. I have more gifts. Seemingly, I have more anointing. I have more education. I have degrees. I have resources. I have connections. But God is saying, how can I trust you? When your character is not on the lines. More than gifts. More than talents. More than money. God is looking for the heart the bible says that man looketh on the outward appearance but i'm so glad that god sees my heart come on i'm so glad that you know that when god judges me he don't judge me by my bank account but he judges me based on the love in my heart come on he don't judge me based on you know about what i can prove to other people but he judges me based on my integrity god needs to know who can i trust give me keys sam God needs to know who can I trust. What I love about this story is that Joseph, when he's elevated to Lord of Egypt, mm, when he's elevated to Lord of Egypt, his character aligns with his position. He comes into contact with his brothers who did him wrong, who betrayed him. And guess what he did? He forgave them. (laughs) I said he forgave them. He didn't bring it up. He didn't make them pay for it. He didn't count their faults. He didn't didn't send them to death because he could have done that. He, He didn't look, he didn't choose his position and say, you know what, now that I have this position, you're gonna starve like everybody else. And if we had to be honest, many of us, if we were in Joseph's shoes, we wouldn't have done what Joseph did. Some of us can't wait. Some of us can't wait to be elevated to prove people wrong. Some of us can't wait to be elevated to get people back. Some people can't wait for God to esteem them so that they can prove their mama wrong and their dad wrong. And I'm going to tell this person, I'm going to tell that person. But your character has to remain. Somebody say, it was necessary. For those of you who are listening, we've been following us all month. We've been preaching divine provision. For those of you, last week, if you did not sow your seed, don't get left out. You can go right to Givelify. There's an envelope there that just says divine provision, cash at whatever. I gave my $1,000. Some people pledged 500. Somebody else gave 1,000. Somebody pledged 100. Some other people pledged. Don't sow something. Don't, don't, don't be left out. Don't be left out on what God is doing. But in this story, we talked about Joseph being the source of provision. But we didn't talk about the man and his feelings. 
Feelings are real. Emotions are real. When his heart breaks, it's real. But purpose trumps feelings every day. I said, you're, I, said, uh, so I said, purpose trumps feelings any day. God had to, you are not a victim, but you are chosen. Even though it's painful, God had, it was, it was purposeful that he had to reposition you. But God wants to know at the end of the day, will your character remain? If you're in the house, stand to your feet if you can. At home, stand to your feet. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Come on, touch yourself. You prophesy. Sooner or later, it's turning in my favor. Oh, uh. Come on, somebody's turning. It's turning around for me. Come on, lift up your hands and sing it with your voice. Come on. Oh, it won't always be like this. Come on, declare it. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Come on, prophesy. The sooner or later is turning in my favor. Come on, one more time. It's turning around for me. Come on, I need somebody to prophesy that to your situation right now. Oh, it will no way be like this. Yet I'm soak up The Lord will perfect concerning me. Come on, somebody declare it. Sooner or later, it's turning in my faith. Come on, somebody say sooner or later. Sooner or Come on, prophesy to yourself, to your situation. Hey, sooner or later, it's turning my favor. It's turning around for me, me, yeah. Come on, yes, Lord. It's turning around for me. Come on, my trials, my tears, my broken heart. I know it had to happen, but it's turning around for me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's turning around for me. Come on, lift your hands before God and worship him because despite it all, somebody open your mouth and say, I trust you, God. Come on, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. Yes. Sooner or later, mm, turning my favor. Sooner or later, turning my favor. Every tear you cry, oh, the hardship that you feel, oh, sooner or later, oh, 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 yeah. for sooner or later, it's turning my favor. Lift your hands. It's turning around for me. Now take a moment and worship him. Come on, take a moment and honor him. Come on, take a moment and worship him. I trust you through it all. Through the trial, through the burden, through the tribulation. Come on. Come on. Come on, pour out your worship to him. Come on, pour out your worship to him. Come on, pour out your worship to him. Come on, only if you trust him. Only if you, if you trust the plan of God for your life. Come on, only you know that he's in control. Storms may rise. Come on, billows may come on roll. But no matter what, I choose to trust him. Hey, come on, I need you to open your mouth. 
come on in the house in your house come on in this house I need you to open your mouth and cry out to God come on open your mouth and worship your God and worship your king sooner or later yeah yes Lord I prophesy yeah yes Lord sooner or later yeah 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 my soul I'm trying to move here. But somebody needs to hear this today. That sooner or later. Yeah, Basa. It's turning my favor. David had to encourage himself. Just touch yourself and encourage yourself and say, It's turning around for me. Through the trials and the pain. Oh, turn them around for me, for me, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord, it's turning around. And so I'm going to connect with somebody today who's watching. You're watching this message. You say, okay, Pastor, I hear you. Where do you go from here? If you're not saved, you need to know the Lord. If you're not connected, you need to be connected. If you don't know God, you need a church. You need prayer. The information is there. You need God. You can't navigate on your own. But you see that number and that information there. Connect with us. Text that number. Prayer to that number. Text salvation to that number. I came to tell you that God knows all about your troubles. He sees and he knows. He, he understands the feelings, but he's got a greater purpose. So we pray right now, Father. Thank you, Jesus. That we will allow purpose to trump our feelings. It hurt. The betrayal hurt. The pain hurt. The separation hurt. The divorce hurt. Mm. The breakup, it hurt. The job loss, it hurt. But it was necessary to get me where I need to be. And we thank you, God, for the, the grace to go through. For your peace that surpasseth all understanding. And we thank you and we honor you. Because you, oh, Baba, we understand that this is temporary. But sooner or later, it's turning. It's turning. I said it's turning. It's turning. I said your, your affliction is turning. Your heartbreak is turning. Hobasha, your situation's turning. Oh, Shay, your present situation is turning. Your current conditions are turning. Oh, shit. And we trust you, God. Help us to hold on. Give us the grace to go through. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody, one more time. For sooner or later, it's turning in my favor. Sooner or later. Yes, Lord, come on. While I'm singing it, somebody type, watch God work. Come on, he's working in your life. That sooner or later. Come on, I need you to declare, watch God work in your life. Turn in my favor. Sooner or later. Yes, Lord. It's turning in my favor. One last time. Oh, sooner or later. Yeah. It's turning in my favor. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's turning around for me. Come on, I need somebody to receive that. Come on, we going right into prayer. That's all right. Yeah.